afternoon. Today, we're going to pick green beans because I want to get these pickled. So I thought you'd like to help me for a while pickle or pick beans, and then we'll go in and can them. Daisy, hey, come on, get back, get back. It's enough now. We're done. Okay. So I have a certain size that I try. To, Daisy, try to go for, and I want them to be about that big. Get back now. Come on. We're done. We're done. So there's lots of beans in here, and this will be the last batch I can because I want to start getting them in the freezer. And I already have eight pints can of pickled green beans. So this will be the end of it. Because my, my cucumbers aren't producing a lot, I wanted to make sure I have enough pickled green beans to compensate for the fact that I'm not going to have any cucumbers to pickle. <laughs> you can't see it, but my dog's sitting right now. <laughs> what? What do you want? Back up. I'm just going to go ahead and pick these, and then when I get done, I'll show you how the, the pear tree looks. It's fully loaded. So we're done picking. We got an ice cream bucket full of beans. So um, we'll go over now and get the dill for them, and then we'll go in and finish processing them in the house. So if you'd like to come and help me. You're welcome to help me. I showed you guys my pear tree when the pears were a little bitty, but they're getting bigger now. And you can just see the huge amount that's on this tree. In September, I'll be canning these and I'll get enough canned to carry out me, to carry me through the winter most of the time. Here's my tomatoes this is how well they've grown and they too are covered with tomatoes these are orange paste these are my big black tomatoes I've never grown these before so this is kind of going to be interesting aren't they beautiful look at that this is an experiment peas are done so I planted watermelon in the center down there just to see if I can get a watermelon to grow this late in the season. And I circled it with radishes. This is what's left of my onion patch. They're still growing, so I'm not going to pull them out. This pot was my wax beans. Those got pulled out. And I, I'm trying an experiment in this one, too. I'm trying to grow sweet corn. There's one, and there's one. They're very slow at germinating, but I've got hopes for them. You can see my pears. They're just encroaching my patio. And then my flowers. So this is my garden. I love to sit out here. I have a shade cloth over the top of the green beans. All right, so now what we're going to do next is cut the tips off. And any bad spots we may see that we think will affect the quality of our product. Now, like, see, this has got a spot, but that's like a, a scar. It might be from rubbing against the planter while it was maturing. So I'm not going to worry about that. My bad spots to me would be where bugs been chewing on it. Once we get these all trimmed up, we're going to lay them neatly in the colander so we can wash these afterwards. I wash them afterwards because I don't like all that water getting all over my hands. Then it drips all over the counter. Then I have to use more towels than necessary to clean it up. So I just reverse my steps. All right, now we're ready to wash our jars and our lids. I don't wash the bands, rewash the bands, because when I take them off after water bath canning, I put them through the dishwasher so they get put away, and I know they're clean, but I do wash the lids. And we'll put them in a pan. 
Ayan. And then I'm going to put hot water on them. I feel we've probably got five pints here. And then I'll just set this over on the stove. Just to wait for us. I've already rinsed our beans off. And now we're just going to go ahead and wash our jars off. And set them in the strainer to dry. Because we have to pack them and get the dill in. We have to get the water for the wa water bath going. And then we have to make the brine. So I don't worry about them being hot. I just want them clean. Because when I put the brine in, the brine is boiling. So it will heat the jars up. pack a jar I like to try to get uniform sized beans in the jar and then I have a separate container for the ones that are too small and I'll cook those up for supper so we'll just go ahead and pack the jars and if we come across one that's like this one it's too long we're going to go ahead and just break a piece off of it like that and throw it in the bowl so, so they all are uniform length because that way we can put the dill on top of them and that'll help them to stay down there in the brine. So we'll keep going until I get all the jars packed. All right, so we've got five pints, just what I figured. So I went out and got 10 stalks of dill because when I do that, I wind it up like this and I stab some of it down in the side and then I bend it over across the top and force it down under the shoulder of the jar. This way it will keep the beans from floating when they're being processed. And I found that works pretty good. And I'm putting two in each jar because my dill is not seeded out yet, but the heads are there and I, I just, I can't wait for it. So next year I'll need to plant the dill sooner than I did this year, which would means I need to create a bigger, see it, and it needs to look like that. I need to create a bigger window of space, growing time in between the dill and the green beans, so the dill is more ready. So that's gotta get planted earlier than the beans. So we're going to just go ahead and keep, now when you have wide mouth jars, it's still kind of the same principle but you just have to tuck it down in amongst the, the vegetable you're trying to pickle. And this dill smells wonderful. You can smell it as it's being mashed into there. So it's got lots of oils. So I'm going to water bath them in this pot. I don't need to use my big one. I have it full of cold water about this full and I'm getting it heating. Now I'm going to make my brine. And for my brine, it's four cups of water, a half a cup of canning salt, and it will be five cups of vinegar.
Now we're going to heat that to boiling. So that will get the jars hot as this when it goes in. All right, the brine has been boiling, and that by the time we get done filling the jars will be boiling. So let's go ahead and add our brine. We want to give it a quarter of an inch head space. down. You don't want anything on the between the glass and the lid, otherwise it won't seal. Screw our band on so it's snug but not tight. Now we're fully loaded, we'll put our cover back on, turn the heat back up to medium, and then once it hits, it comes back up to a boil, we will set the timer for 10 minutes. We have leftover brine now, so I'm going to let that cool, and I'll save that for something like fresh refrigerator pickles, uh, things like that. So, now we just wait. All right, the timer says we're down to a one minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut my stove off because I have an electric stove. So it's got a lot of heat in the coil yet. It'll keep it processing until the timer goes off. Now, because this is extremely hot, you lift away from yourself so the steam goes away from you. And now we try to take them out in the order we put them in. Making sure you have a solid grip. You tip it a little bit to get that hot vinegar or hot boiling water off. And we'll set it on our cloth to cool. See how nice that looks? Like 
have this hot foil so it can start cooling down because I don't want to dump that hot, hot water down the drain. And we'll cover up our very, very hot jars with a towel. Now that's to keep drafts off of it. And also, if it should explode, we'll help try and contain any explosion. And now we just wait for it to cool and to listen for the pings as the tops go down. Hope you've enjoyed making pickled green beans with me and um, don't be afraid to give it a try for yourself. You're gonna love them, they're so good. They're almost better than cucumbers. You all have a good afternoon and I'll see you again. Bye.